Today on Lockdown Canadians is a trade imminent with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Jaden Struble has been recalled. And what players on the Rocket should you go and watch in person? You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 958. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. My name is Laura Saba, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined, as always, by Scott Matla of Habs Eyes on the Prize. And Scott, thank you for writing the show today. <laughs> Um, I had one idea and then Scott had lots of other ideas. So we're essentially going to be talking about uh, what Scott has prepped today, even though I'm the one hosting. Uh, to be fair, I didn't really prep much in that like the Canadians actually gave us plenty to discuss today. Uh, for those who are watching us on YouTube, where you can find us every day, in addition to wherever you find your daily podcasts, is the show notes are on. And I will once again remember what side I am pointing at on YouTube here. It's been four years. The uh, Canadians today, ahead of their trip to the West Coast, to California specifically, have recalled Jaden Struble from the Laval Rocket. Raphael Harvey Pinard has gone on IR, and some folks were like, well, that leaves them with a lot of defensemen. Uh, Arbor Jacki is not making the trip with the team as well. Neither, uh, obviously, is Harvey Pinard, who's going on IR. So uh, Jordan Harris is still... Uh, day-to-day-ish, and Gustav Lindstrom, I believe, is still with uh, the team here. So the team's banged up, but I I was shocked that Jaden Struble ended up being the top call-up here from the Rocket based on the preseason. That obviously changed very, very quickly once the regular season and even the rookie showcases started, but I'm very, very happy to see uh, Jaden Struble get called up. I'd love to see him reunited with Jordan Harris, but it's an exciting time. It's our first, uh, it's our first rookie call up of the NHL season this year. I honestly thought it would be Joshua Wall, um, and then I can't even remember at this point. I think we were talking about uh, who would be the first call up. I, I feel like we were floating Matisse Norlander and uh, Logan Mayu's names. And now it's Jaden Struble. And I'm very excited. Uh, one thing that I love about Jaden Struble is that he's extremely, he's extremely large and like, and heavy, but he moves really well. And the thing is well, originally like Norlander played really well in the preseason and everything. Uh, and then William Trudeau was very good, got sent down. And then it's the funny part about everything is how quickly things can change. You can look great in the preseason. And we've seen this before. Sometimes, you know, Thomas Fleischman came in on a PTO and left with a one-year contract for the Canadians. He was part of that uh, now infamous, depending on who you are talking to, uh, Dale Weiss and Thomas Fleischman for Philip Deneau trade. And Jaden Shuba thought, okay, they're going to give him time, let him cook there in the AHL a little bit. And people are going to ask, what is Jaden Struble's strengths? Is he is somehow ironically the calming presence because when he was in college playing with Jordan Harris, Jordan Harris was like the cool, calm, collected, makes the smart plays, smart moves guy here. And Jaden Struble is here. He's there. He's everywhere. Uh, like Roy Roy Kent. Kent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A little bit less vulgar, but he was everywhere because he was the aggressive, offensive minded, physical defenseman. And he still has that edge. I've watched him make plays in a game where he runs through somebody on a hit, breaks up the play, transitions it, and then jumps into the offensive zone for a scoring chance. And his mobility is surprising because you look at him, he's big. He is he is a brick S house, as, uh, as I can put it on this podcast because we are a family-friendly show. I've talked to him personally. He doesn't look overly large, but he's just solid he is a brick wall of a player and he skates so well and he shoots so well and he 
He's smart with the puck. There are still wrinkles to his game to iron out, but I look at where out of everyone with the rocket right now, Matias not only just struggled a little bit, Logan Mayu is developing his defensive game. William Trudeau has not been where he needs to be for this. And they're not in Nicola Baudin is, you know, on and off playing. They don't really have another option there. And I looked at Struble. He's very clearly the top option there. Like if they were calling up a forward and they needed offense, they're going to call up Joshua. That is, that's a no brainer. That's going to happen. Jaden Struble is a very fun fit for this team because he plays with aggression, he plays with control, and he plays with the ability to move the puck, which is something that I feel a lot of the Canadians have struggled with lately. I watch their often their breakouts in the defensive zone, and they're non-existent because no one is skating the puck outside of Mike Matheson from time to time, maybe Caden Gooley, bringing that edge. And I, this is going to get a lot of people very angry, and I apologize for that. It's not meant to disregard the level of play of one person. But what Jaden Struble does right now is what people think Arbor Jack Eye does all the time there. He is a physical presence, not as physical as Jack Eye, but he's got the better skating and the better offensive acumen in terms of decision making. Jack Eye is improving those things and can very easily be it. It's likely a step ahead. But watching Jaden Struble develop in the few games he played last year in Laval into the preseason, into the regular season this year, his trajectory is climbing rapidly and is someone that I think a lot of people would be unwise to ignore going into next season. I hate to sound like a mainstream media member here, but how much of this call of being the first one uh, do you think has to do with the fact that Kent Hughes is extremely familiar with his alma mater? I mean, that may be part of it, but I also think it's – if, and I'm going to try to use this word correctly because I'm not sure if I am. If it's a meritocracy, you know, based system here, he was the best defenseman on an NHL deal that was able to be called up here. Uh, and it makes the most sense is, you know, you should reward good play. If there's a spot where they need a top six guy, like if Harvey Proud is out longer term and let's say Josh Anderson is out for a couple of games or whatever – they're not going to just plug Yol Armia into that spot. They might give Joshua Sean Farrell that spot, and they will have earned that. There is a familiarity with that, but I also think that they probably got Martin St. Louis' input. They probably talked to Jean-Francois Houle and the Rockets staff there, and they probably went. The team, when Jaden Struble was suspended, I mean, they won the games that he wasn't there for somehow, which is the stunning part to me. But when he is there, he is a stabilizing presence a bit there more than we've seen with other players. He's earned his recall. And I think that is among the most important things is that when you're developing players, rewarding them when they do well is crucial. Even if it's a game, two games, he may play only one of the games this weekend here, because if they still have Lindstrom Harris is on the trip, they have seven defensemen. I believe I I'm willing to bet that he'll play at least one of these games here. And then that's, they'll see where it's at. If he's outplays somebody, they'll keep him in the lineup. If he doesn't, Okay, he'll go back down to the Rocket when this week is over. It is, however, a huge loss for the Rocket, who have two games against the Amherst this week. And uh, Rochester scores a lot of goals. Laval allows a lot of goals and also scores a lot of goals. And now they are missing probably their best defenseman. So it's going to be a very interesting weekend or week for the Rocket here. Uh, in New York, of all places, too, in Rochester. Uh, we will be talking a little bit more about the Rocket in our next segment, but I have a quick programming note. There will be no Thursday episode this week. None, zero, no Thursday episode. I will try my very, very best to do a 10-minute recap of the game um, and post it at some point on that on that Thursday. However, uh, I can't announce it just yet because I'm still in the process of lining it up, but I may have a very, very special guest uh, joining me for the bail bag, and it's good. Uh, so get your future NHLer questions ready <laughs> uh, for my extremely awesome guests, assuming uh, they are able to make it to this week's Friday mailbag. And we will have more on the rocket in just one moment. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. How often do you find out an artist you love is going to be in town and then you miss the boat on buying tickets? You're scrambling. You can't find one. You end up overpaying. 
And I'm here to tell you that getting tickets should not be that stressful because now there's game time. Game time has flash deals and it's so easy to use. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase because you can see the view from your seat before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And the all-in prices show your total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. How annoying are those hidden fees? With Game Time, you don't have that. You can buy tickets in literal seconds with just two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. And Scott, we have a mailbag question from this week. Um, and it was it was uh, sent to us knowing that there was a potential that you would not be here for that mailbag episode. And that did turn out to be true. Um, so we have, um, the question is from a uh, longtime listener, Kenneth. Hi, Laura and Scott. I have yet again another question regarding the rocket. I'm taking my wife and my father-in-law to the Crunch Rocket game on the 25th. Would it be possible for Scott to give a quick rundown of who and what to watch at the game? It would be awesome if you knew any of the Crunch players to watch too, but no big deal if you don't. And if this doesn't make the Black Friday episode, don't worry about it. Keep up the great work trying to keep everyone positive about the team during the rebuild. All right, Scott. So... This is your baby, essentially. So uh, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I don't really have all that much to add, other than the fact that, like, hopefully Joshua was there. Um, you know, when you go see, because he could get called up at any moment. Who are the players to watch? So I don't think Waz going to get called up this week, just because they are on the road starting. Uh, so they're in Rochester Wednesday, Rochester Saturday, and then the game that our listeners going to see is in Syracuse on Saturday. Uh, and then they go out to, oh God, they play two 10 p.m. start games uh, after that in Abbotsford. I, the biggest thing is you're going to want to watch Joshua Wan, Sean Farrell. They are the two most exciting players on this team for all the right reasons. And when their synergy is cooking together, it's it's hard to ignore on that. It's He, he is probably the most talented player overall like across the board that the Canadians have had in the AHL since arguably Sherback and Charles Houdon in uh, St. John, which is a long, long time ago at this point. So uh, Juan Farrell is the very easy answer on this. I was going to say, you know, Jaden Struble because Jaden Struble was a lot of fun to watch as a physical menacing force, but also a guy with a lot of Defensive upside who does a lot of the little things right here. Uh, besides that, uh, Logan Mayu is a very interesting player to watch because he makes a lot of very smart plays in the offensive zone. But every now and then you see his uh, hockey IQ struggles, I think is, is the charitable way for me to phrase this in that he tries to do too much or gets himself into a situation where he's trying to do too much and ends up having to make a desperation play. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it does not. Uh, in the offensive zone, ridiculous slap shot, which we knew. And he's gotten very good at finding a home for his wrist shot from the point. Sometimes he's firing it off his back foot and sometimes it's getting deflected. Sometimes it's just getting a nice bounce. But uh, personally, you know, I think he's someone that if you're in for like goals and nothing but goals, he's going to be right up your alleyway there. Uh, as for the crunch, I'm not 100% sure Tampa's cupboard is very bare in terms of prospects, which consistently going deep in the playoffs will do that to a team when you trade picks to continue to add pieces. I, I don't know a ton on their team. I can tell you the game's going to be feisty. Uh, it's unfortunate that it seems uh, Riley McKay will miss this trip. He's one of the Rockets, you know, feisty or tougher guys, loves to stand up for his teammates. And Leah Sanderson will be missing for at least the next two months due to a recurring injury. Uh, they are a little beat up uh, in terms of this trip here. Uh, I don't anticipate they might get a few guys back here. Mitchell Stevens didn't play. Philippe Maillet is out. But 
you're going to be watching that line of Brandon Jinyak in the middle with Joshua Wan, Sean Farrell primarily. That's going to be uh, the thing you should hone in on. I've liked a lot of what I've seen from Riley Kidney. The points aren't there, but he's doing a lot to create that. And sometimes he's he's just unlucky. Simple as that. There's, sometimes there is no other way to describe it other than they're just unlucky at this point. And when it comes to the rocket and crunch, uh, unexpected sources of goals are what you're going to get here. You might see Nathan Legale take off, Jan Mishak, but you're going to see goals from anybody in this game. They're nasty. There's always a bunch of goals involved. Uh, it's going to be a good time, and the On Center is an old building, but it gets it gets rocking in there for playoff games. That was my next question is, because you've been to those games, I know that, because that's where you met Julian McKenzie for the first time, isn't it? Yes, that was... That was the St. John's Ice Caps and the Syracuse Crunch playing their first round series in which uh, I watched Noah Juleson make his professional debut uh, for the, for the uh, not the Laval Rocket, St. John's Ice Caps at that time. And someone came up to me as I was sitting in the press box and goes, oh, I'm Julian. I know Jared and I know Andrew and I go Mark and I go into our Slack channel and go, hey, who the hell is Julian? And I go, Julian <laughs> the intern, which if he's listened to this is a throwback and a half. And it's wild. Julian that, writes for the New York Times now. Yeah, Julian works at the Athletic, <laughs> for God's sakes. And it's like, I caught up with him at the NHL draft two years ago, and I went, you ever think when I met you in a dingy press box in Syracuse, we would be at an NHL draft together uh, years and years later? So one of, it's one of my favorite stories uh, ever, because Julian's one of the, like, truly one of the best people in the world. Uh, if he's I was listening about to, this, to say, he's a gold uh, standard human being. Yeah, with his 9,000 jobs. I think he's down <laughs> to like 3,000 jobs now. But uh, if he's listening to this, hi, Julian. Miss you, buddy. Uh, I, I I think I've given you all I can. If you're in the Syracuse area uh, looking for stuff around the arena, uh, Exo Taco is great if you're looking for tacos. The Evergreen has a great uh, beer list there, including several from the company that I'm employed by that I cannot mention on the show, I'm pretty sure, for other reasons. Hopspot does poutine downtown, uh, right by the adult pharmaceutical store. Uh, trying to think of what else is out there. And there's dinosaur barbecue, I guess. And get salt potatoes, I guess, if that's your thing. So uh, there's plenty. There's actually a lot in downtown Syracuse. Wolf's Beer Garden, if you're looking for a classic German like beer garden to watch soccer and stuff at beforehand, there's a little bit of everything down there. So. Are you going to have to edit that one part? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to have to edit that one part out or no? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to figure it out. Uh, I'll listen back. Uh, that's a peek behind the curtain for you all. Uh, all right. Uh, we are about to talk. It's, I mean, it's silly season is starting pretty early, eh? With the trade rumors and everything. So we are about to get into some trade rumors and everything. Uh, when it comes to goaltending, the Edmonton Oilers, it's something that is on all of our minds. And we'll be right with you with all of that. But first, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. And now it is time to traffic and trade rumors. It's not actually trade rumors. I think it's a little bit more educated guessing, isn't it? I mean, yes, because it's coming from Elliot Friedman, which I know we've talked about Jake Allen being the trade target, Jake Allen being the trade target. Are they going to trade Jake Allen? Hey, Jake Allen, Jake Allen trading. It's like the seagulls from Finding Nemo, but instead <laughs> of saying mine, they just say Jake Allen trade over and over again. Uh, Friedman mentioned that the Oilers were very interested in the Canadians goaltenders, which, duh, if there's anyone out in the world there, 
looking at teams going, oh, the Canadians have three on their roster right now. Uh, they're apparently most interested in Samuel Montembeau or Caden Primo, apparently. And my thought is Kent Hughes is trying to get this Samuel Montembeau extension done so he can proceed with this trade. Once he knows kind of what his timeline is, he's going to go, these are your options. Take it or leave it. And the Oilers right now are tied 2-2 with Cal Pickard as their starting goalie in Sunrise, Florida. So that take it or leave it is becoming more, you're going to take this and you're going to pay out the nose for it. Uh, I don't think Caden Primo solves their problems, to be quite honest with you. And I've liked what I've seen from Caden Primo this year for the most part, but I don't think he solves their problem, and I think I'd almost rather err on the younger two options in net, but if they're willing to pay more for the younger guy with another year on his deal, I'm not going to say no to that whatsoever, but uh, that's also just my thought. I know everyone has different feelings on the Canadians goaltenders this year. It feels like a lot of it has been interchangeable in that. Well, they sometimes let in a bad goal, but also the defense is porous and bad and not really helping any of them out at this point. I think that's the thing. And it's interesting because we received a comment today um, saying, you know, it could be the goaltending that's bad. The goaltending is just simply bad. Stop blaming the team in front of them. But it came from a Leafs fan. So <laughs> um, I don't know how much, uh, how much uh, stock to take into that comment. But honestly, for me, I think this team is not at the level yet where they need to be going all out and finding that superstar goalie. Ideally, what happens is one of the people that they've drafted turns into the next carry price. But in the absence of that, like a goaltender is the person that you need to be above replacement level. If the rest of your team is good, everything's going to be okay. A goalie can steal a series for you. It can steal an entire playoff run for you. But in terms of like today, I don't think it's that big a deal. I truly don't. No. And it's the, the, this is the hardest part is because we know the Canadians are searching for that next goal. And right now, Jacob Fowler seems to be off to an incredible start at Boston college. He's nine, two and one uh, right now, but it is early. Caden Primo was a great college goalie. And there's a name, uh, Hayden hockey, which is a name that I'm going to throw back in here was a great college goalie hasn't gotten above the ECHL level since then. Sometimes these things just happen. You know, Jakob Dobish is young, so we haven't quite figured out what's there yet. But at the same time, it's a it's a cap crunch the Canadians really cannot afford right now because I'd like them to shift some of that to give themselves as much flexibility as they can, which lends itself towards trading Allen, who outside of Carey Price, who is obviously LTIR retired, is the most expensive goalie on the books here. He's also the one that seems to fit what the Oilers are looking for. They want a veteran. They want to, you know, lock this in here because their, their window is getting smaller and smaller. McDavid and Dreisaitl are UFA in the almost immediate future here. And if they can't get it together this year, they might not even get to UFA and they might just want out at that point. So, Oilers fans kind of hit the point where they go, we have to do something because very clearly Stuart Skinner is struggling under the workload and Jack Campbell has an 819 in the AHL right now. It's bad. And there was a tweet thread from at woodguy55. He's one of the you know smarter Oilers fans out there uh, that came across my feed and this is the thread you can look for yourself. There is that my guess is Montreal is willing to deal Allen once if they get Montembeau signed, which is what we talked about. And the guess is, is that you have to trade Jack Campbell to the Canadians with a huge sweetener added on there. And then Montreal will buy out Jack Campbell next summer. And everyone's immediately like that and going more dead cap. I believe it was in our Slack chat. Andrew Zadarnowski did the buyout math on this, and I'm going to try and look this up. The biggest issue is, let's see here, his buyout cost is $1.5 million. So you save $3.9 million, 2.7, 2.4, et cetera. But it goes until 29, 30, 2029, 2030. So that's 
one, two, three, four, five, six more years. He only has three more years on his deal. The buyout lasts six more years. That's a long time. And Oilers fans are looking at this and thinking to themselves, it's a big cost, the equivalent of potentially up to three first round picks because you are buying a contract buyout, basically. And my thought with that is this entire conversation starts with Raphael Lavoie, Xavier Borgo, obviously Jack Campbell, and then picks because they need that contract off the books to be able to acquire Jake Allen in the first place. There's a $1.2 million difference between the contracts, I believe. And if you're Kent Hughes, you're taking on a $5 million cap hit, maybe some salary retention a little bit to with there, and you're putting a guy who is worse than both of your goaltenders in the AHL right now, and both goaltenders in the AHL right now aren't above a 900 save percentage either. You're asking a lot of that situation, and Jack Campbell is not exactly in a spot to come help the NHL team right now either. Uh, my thought is if the pot is that sweet, we're talking equivalent to three first round picks and then maybe some prospects or something thrown in there. It's maybe something you can't ignore. And you, if there's retention, maybe you flip them again, you buy them out, you do whatever, but it makes two, no matter what a Jake Allen trade to Edmonton involves Jack Campbell coming back in some way. It's just determining how desperate are the Oilers to get all of that contract off the books and how much are you willing to pay to try and fix this problem while you still have McDavid and Dreisaitl. So before we end the show, I want to go off on a tangent a little bit. If you're Connor McDavid, what are you doing when your contract is coming up? I'm, I'm basically sitting on a throne and asking for visitors to, you know, pitch themselves to me at this point. I, if they don't, this, this is reminding me of John Tavares. Yeah, except Connor McDavid can skate. It's still. good. <laughs> We're gonna have so many angry people. But like, I with the cap rising here, if you're looking at some of these rebuilding teams who are about to shed a lot of contracts and are or you know getting rid of some dead weight contracts there and things are opening up a little bit, every there's not a team in the league that won't be in for Connor McDavid. If he were to say, I am. I, if they go through the season and for whatever reason they they don't make the playoffs, they lose in the first round again. Every team in the league is going to go. They're going. They're going to tamper and just be like, guess what? We we want Connor McDavid. We will move anything we have to to make this work. That that's every team, even the ones that don't have any cap space right now. They will do anything possible to make this work. It's Connor McDavid. And that's not to forget. Dry settles a UFA before he is. And he is also someone who is very clearly fed up with losing. You can tell because he get he gets out of getting Malkin kind of mean streak in him, where he does a bunch of definitely illegal stuff, but not totally, but doesn't always get called on it. If it if it comes down to it, one, Ken Holland should never work in hockey again if McDavid ends up leaving Edmonton without having won anything except for individual trophies. And it's shaping up the, I know that Stanley Cups are hard to win. But blowing it with two of the best players in the league in the world right now is a disaster. And the fact that it came down to goaltending and they fired the coach, who I don't think was the problem, they're relying on an AHL goalie to try and save their season right now. You are not the Montreal Canadiens who are rebuilding. You are the Edmonton Oilers with Connor McDavid. The fact that it has come down to, well, Kent Hughes has us over a barrel, basically, is gross malpractice as a from a GM and if if this was the real world this person would have, should have been fired a long time ago just for terrible performance McDavid can hold court and get whatever he wants basically if he says he's done he can just start lining up the suitors as soon as he wants yep all he needs is to let people know he's not going to be re-signing in Edmonton in the meantime we are going to have a Wednesday episode we're not going to have a Thursday episode Uh, But we're going to have a very special Friday mailbag episode. And I will confirm to you uh, on the episode tomorrow, hopefully, (laughs) that uh, we've lined up a guest for that Friday mailbag episode. Uh, So make sure you are subscribed to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every day. And there's an exciting, exciting new development in that we have... Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. 
Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. You can also find us on Twitter. We're, uh, we're at LO underscore Canadians. You can leave mailback questions in the YouTube comments. Just put mailback question at the beginning. Some of you have taken to writing MBQ, which we find amazing. Um, and at the same time, you can find us on, on all social media. I'm at The Active Stick. Scott is at Scott Matlef. Thank you so much for listening. And make sure you come back tomorrow.